This is Spencer with The MacGuffin, and today I'm joined by the director and star of Ava's Possession, Jordan Galland, Louisa Krauss. Um, Hello. I want to start by uh, making an admission. Um, heading into your film, I was hella skeptical. Um, <laughs> I initially was like, I don't know if I need another possession film. Like, I've seen The Exorcist. I've seen The Exorcism of Emily Rose. Like, I feel like exorcism, exorci exor exorci exorcism has done, been done pretty, pretty well. Um, so it was a very pleasant surprise to see that the film is, I mean, it's about it, but not about it at the same time. Um, how did you um, go about coming about this idea for it and sort of putting a novel spin on the the genre of possession, if you will. And, and for you, uh, Louisa, there have been so many possession films in the past. How did you sort of like try and uniquely develop your characters, not just some like, well, in this case, post-demonic, but mm -hmm. demonic right. character? Okay. Well, do you want to start? And then... Sure, yeah. Um, I, uh, I love possession films. I love supernatural horror films like Rosemary's Baby and The Shining as well, not Omen. just The Exorcist, The Omen. Um, and um, I love them for so many different reasons, but and I wanted to make a movie like that, but I also didn't want to do it unless it was going to be a new take on that, maybe add something to the genre a little bit or just explore a new angle. And it took me a while. I... I, I did a lot of dr uh, drafts of treatments and just exploring ideas as I was in post-production on my last film. I was working on the script for a couple years um, until I arrived at this idea of a, of a girl who's recovering from demonic possession, coming through the other side of the looking glass, and, um, and just sort of thinking about what would it be like the, the priest telling her, uh, listen, you, uh, you know that moment where somebody has to tell her what happened. And, and then also combining it with this sort of like youth culture kind of film feeling because it, you know, it's like waking up from a hangover and, and the, a lot of the movies that I was like, the, that were influencing me were, I, I, I didn't consciously do it, but I was thinking about like movies like My Own Private Idaho and movies sure. where characters are in a bit of a haze and they're, and there's like cool music and, and they're just trying to like get through the problems of like, you know, the, the 20 something problems where you're like, you got these you have friends and your social life and you're rebelling against your family, but also, you know, trying to be an adult. And I just, I, that was one element. And then there was, so I, I knew that that was a really cool element, but then I felt like I also wanted to have a mystery because I just, mm -hmm. I love I love mystery films, and um, and I and I just think that this there was a real opportunity here when I realized oh she can she can have amnesia from the time of her possession, <laughs> and then it can there's a so there's a little bit of a memento angle where like she mm -hmm. has to figure out what she did. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> what I don't <laughs> remember anything. All these things are buzzing <laughs> in my head right now. I'm just like oh yes yes yes, um, but uh, yeah I I. I didn't want Ava to be so much a victim, um, and that the script really yields to that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sort of riding the mystery, magical mystery tour of the movie. Um, well, I, Jordan showed me my own private Idaho for like a stylistic vibe, and I really liked River Phoenix's sort of chill coolness and ability just hmm. sort of going with the just you know just he was very chill but had this this um no effort coolness about him um even though he was dealing with his you know his own his own form well, of yeah he's a narcoleptic narcoleptic you know, and um element. so yeah I I I held on to that and I just had a blast doing the the demonic stuff because that stuff you just surrender to you know angry animal videos basically i watched angry <laughs> animal videos of rept of of goats pigs because everything that nafula was is a goat pig uh, feline and and um reptile and bird and um and so, and yeah, yeah. So that was fun, but it really, it, it was, it, it was the, the mystery is so cool. Putting putting the pieces back together, and um, and getting her life back, and maintaining 
strength um, and, and finding out who she is through through finding out what happened while she was possessed, she sort of discovers more who she actually wants to be as a person. Um, it, it's, it's interesting, you know, the, the mystery is very interesting, uh, sort of the flashback memento angle is very interesting, but one of the things that I actually enjoyed quite a bit was sort of the comedic undertone that's going on as well, you know, with like her going to, what was it, a... Uh, uh, something spirit, non- possession, yeah, spirit anonymous. possession anonymous. Yeah, they don't even say the word demon. Right, exactly. But it's just like it's just a known thing. Like you can get off of like these criminal charges by going to spirit possession. Or, right, right. Uh, well, I like you know I want to. I, I, it's I like a known alt- thing. You know, it's how the court system works. Just bounce them over there. I, I like alternate universes too. Where, like it's great. like ours, but there's this other element to it. Yeah. How, how did you go about, you know, balancing that in terms of like a writing perspective, a directing perspective and an acting perspective? Because it's like it very easily could have been like a totally comedic story. Like, oh, girl wakes up from, you know, uh, being possessed. Look at the quirky things she has to do to sort of get past it. Like you honestly could write this as a comedy. And I could yeah, totally and those are the type of things that, that the, uh, those are the type of conversations we had. I had with various people trying to raise money and they're like, well, it should be funny or you should do more. Let's get like, think more about like, what if Seth Rogen was possessed? That would be funny. And, um, or like, you know, let's take it more towards Saw. Like we need her to be, it's found all found footage. And I really didn't want to take this idea and do that with it. I mean, for me, like it was really important to, 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 to create and maintain uh, a, a visual style that would that would be very rich and very colorful and 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 not like the desaturated sort of dark you know serious or gritty trendy or sort of approach towards horror films and possession movies and that's a good approach I just didn't want to do oh. that with this I wanted to draw a line and say this is gonna really focus on a visual. Um, style and and then you know with with the actors it, it had a lot to do with just like treat everything like it's real and I don't want to like go for jokes I don't want to go for scares let's just you know and we didn't have a, a lot of time so that that was really important to you know just make sure that I mean and, and part of that experience was be <laughs> working like around the clock and just we didn't really have a lot of time to, to play around per se. Yeah, but it really, it was for me and I think the other actors just, uh, we live and exist in this world and and so just treat everything as if it's absolutely believable. I mean, obviously we're in this like very stylized environment, um, but it's always keeping that one foot grounded in reality um, for sure. But it was so fun to, to like, React off of all the all of the different characters. That mm-hmm. ensemble is so great to work with everybody. You know, they would just pop in, you know, now and again, and it's like, it, I mean, it, what what a joy to be able to see all of them up there. I was just like, oh, good, a break for me. Let me see somebody. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, yeah, because like she was in, ev- she was on set every day, every scene. So that's you, a, you, make, you bring up a very sort of interesting point, and I'm gonna do my absolute best to avoid getting anywhere near spoilers but there is sort of and this is kind of something I've talked about with like Casino Royale in a weird comparison which to the way. one uh, the remake the remake um, not the one with Orson Welles and Woody no, Allen no, 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 no. Yeah. Um, in that there's like a distinctly kind of two separate not separate films but like you know in Casino Royale it's like everything before he gets to Montenegro is like it could be its own film and you'd be like that's a fine movie um, but in this one you're right like your family storyline is kind of over here and then like everything else is kind of over here and there's not a heck of a lot of crossover between the two of them so what was it like trying to act in those two different situations because it felt like I mean and understandably so when you're dealing with your family versus when you're dealing with you know friends and other people having like a kind of a slightly different character in both of those sort of things. I mean, when you're around your family, you're kind of like exhausted by them. They're kind of all over your shit. And when you're with these other people learning about this completely other world, you're kind of, I don't know, finding out who you are, so to speak. What right. is that sort of like as an actor and just structurally as a filmmaker to try and balance those two different, I guess, yeah. dynamic roles? Yeah, well, definitely this movie for me was like doing 
I, like run, doing squats and doing push-ups and then and then <laughs> running a marathon like when I'm possessed you know it's like but you know and it, when I it just uh but yeah I feel like for Ava everybody in her life is sort of they're all this audience in a way and she's very introverted and they're sort of watching her deal with stuff but she doesn't want to really let on to any um uh, that she's weak in by any means and um but yeah, I mean, it was, it's all in the writing. I mean, in the scenes, I mean, yeah. So I was just saying the words and trying to be, <laughs> trying to be truthful with them and, and reacting off of the different characters. And you bring up a good point here that the weakness was something where like, uh, I remember getting a series of notes from different people with the script that it was like, well, Evan needs to react a lot more to the news that she's possessed. And I, I just envisioned it as more of like, no, she would be, she would feel so vulnerable that she'd want to kind of make everybody think she's got this, like it's cool, I got it, but really she yeah. doesn't. And that's more, of, I think, what people can relate to in a character like that is, is, is trying to hide their weakness, even though everybody knows it, everybody's seen it. So like, I don't know that that really humanized the character for me and want to like see her, you know, sort of deal with her own vulnerability and start to like be okay with it and then also harness it as a strength mm -hmm. um but there was definitely a division between like the family stuff and the spirit possession anonymous stuff and and I also felt like that's sort of the division between angels and demons you know like there's 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 a lot of dichotomy and there's there, there's places where because I really tried to focus on the visual styles of the film. I tried to, like, in certain places there's red light and it's sort of hell, and then there's other places where it's, like, brighter light and that's heaven, and it doesn't necessarily mean that it's good or bad. We're actually sort of raising those questions, yeah. like, what's more... You know, there's a point in the movie where Ava says, um, did what I do while I was possessed, is that really worse than what your average scumbag has already done? Mm -hmm. And I feel like that, for me, is a question I ask. Like, well, what are demons? You know, what are our demons? They're actually, they're the worst side of us, but we can't just ignore them. We can't just repress them. We have to... Well, I mean, one of the interesting things that sort of this makes me think about, though, is what is it like in terms of creating mythology for something like this? I mean, did you actually, like, look at other, like... I don't know. Did you actually like investigate religion and be like, this is, you know, accurate? Or did you say like, you know, I'm just going to create my own mythology and do it my way and just whatever I want for this universe. Like that's, I mean, it can theoretically be a very large concept to try and integrate into something like this. Yeah. Well, I didn't, I wasn't working from any source material. I didn't feel like I needed to be true to like a comic book. There's, you know, there's definitely fans of the genre, but it's not as if Nofula has his own comic book and I was veering off drastically it's not from canon, that. okay? Yeah, that's exactly. Why I want to make sure we get out there I, right now. It's I, not I guess that's my point. I mean, and so I I grew up, I did go to Catholic school when I was younger, so I, um, and I went to church. I, and, you had some baseline I had some baseline religious stuff. I was very, like, you know, I was always fascinated by the beautiful Renaissance paintings of heaven and hell and the activities that was going on there in this sort of expansive world visually of all this stuff. And I also grew up, like, reading a lot of comic books and I loved X-Men and and the and we're experiencing that now with the films where there's all these crossover movies and you feel like these worlds are real because characters are here and they show up in this person's story like Greek gods and stuff and I there's there's no way to tell that scope Unless you're doing like a TV show, I think, or if you're, or if Marvel's going to spin off this to a TV show, or is that the backdoor <laughs> thing you're trying to get I'm out of? I, like, I feel like we got like no, I got I, that, that would be amazing, but and I'd love to explore that more. But I think like for me, the the idea was like, well, if you're going to tell a story, let's just let's tell Ava's story, but like we're seeing this weird backdrop of all the stuff that's going on, and part of the fun is creating, like. Uh, doing you wrote the wiki page. You wrote the Nafula wiki page. Exactly. I mean, and you the actually handbook. Write it? Yeah. Did. That's fantastic. And the Spirit Possession Anonymous guidebook. He wrote it. Well, we can get that started out there, you know. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, no, and it was fun to create all that stuff. Um, definitely. Very cool. Um, in terms of, from your perspective, how was this project sort of pitched you, and what was it that finally you're like, I want to fucking do that thing? Yeah, it was. Uh, it was really just. 
what happens to a girl after she's been possessed and after the exorcism? What is her life after that? And it's like, oh, yeah, I want to do that. That sounds awesome. That hasn't been really <laughs> done before. And uh, and Jordan just seemed like such a nice guy. And it really, with all these great ideas and inspired by so many movies, and he would gift me movies, like just to just to watch, to absorb, maybe for the movie, maybe not, but just, you know, I mean, just... He, and, just to like talk about it like uh, yeah, during lunch. Ta- <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's just like a sweet, like the sweetest director I've ever worked with. Just, and and, he, and really everybody showed up to set and they were happy to be there every day. And yeah, I mean, we were all on this like wild, crazy, in this crazy world, but grounded in this sweetness that was Jordan. <laughs> Did you have any sort nice of horror hear. background like him? I mean, you spoke about your love for Exorcism movies, uh, like The Omen, Rosemary's Baby, all that sort of stuff. Did you have that sort of background coming into no, this? No, I didn't. And then, you know, actually, well, I love, I love every Halloween just like binge watching horror movies. Sure. Um, but, uh, but no, I never, I was never really a huge fan. Like, you know, oh, I got to see the next one that's coming out. But, but yeah, now, now like living in the, this, this weird world, I'm, I'm excited by it and, and, and maybe we'll watch more of these kinds of films. <laughs> Who knows? Let's get that TV series made, man. Let's, make, it, like, let's make the TV series. I'm sure there's enough mythology to make that happen. Yeah, that would be, that would be really fun. Very cool. Um, so the film, it was Possession. Uh, do you have any future uh, festivals or release dates or anything that people should know about or website that people can go to to find out more? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we have a Facebook page. We have a we have we have a website, Ava's Possessions Movie or something like that. dot com. But I mean, <laughs> these days you just you know Google it and you'll sure. find out a lot of stuff. Um, Sean Lennon did an amazing soundtrack for the yeah, film, the and he's going to be excellent. releasing. Cool. A, a record of that uh, at some point it hopefully it coincide with the release of the film we um we don't have a release date yet but soon enough do you guys have any other projects you want people to keep their attention out for or do you have social media stuff to uh have people go to to keep up to date on these projects i mean I, I, we, we both have twitter I'm Luen Kraus. I'm Jordan Gallen, and on Instagram, I'm Land of Gal. It's a pun on my last name. <laughs> Very nice. Yes, yes. But I have a movie coming out or uh, soon-ish, I think, The Confines, which is it's a psychological thriller. So that that that's sort of in this in this realm. I think you need just like world. a flat out comedy or something. To I know. <laughs> to I know. Yeah. I know. I did a. a I've done, yeah. There's a lot of stuff that will be coming out. So maybe my Twitter. If you check my Twitter, I'll I'll tweet about it. <laughs> Very cool. Well, I wish you the best of luck with Thank Davis you. possession, everything that comes after it, and uh, people check it out when it comes to a theater near you. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Yay. Good to, good talking with you. Yeah, thank you. Magneto can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Even Zod can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. This type don't even try to buy the sound style. Mr. Spock can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Wrath of Khan can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. The Borg can't stop me. I'm on fire tonight. Because I've got space game and it feels alright.